Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you our 2012 Sun Belt Conference preview. So let's just start by hitting the recruiting trail to see how well these teams recruited this past offseason. Arkansas State clearly had the top recruited class in the Sun Belt Conference. Many guys on this list will have an immediate impact this season, but the one guy that stands out to me is Tevin Bryson, 6'4", 285 pounds, defensive lineman, a guy that can collapse a pocket and also hold his own at the line of scrimmage in a running game. And you need that when you're playing in the Sun Belt Conference against these spread offenses. So this was a huge pickup for Arkansas State. When you run a 3-4 defense, you have to continue to add edge rushers. That's why the Cajuns went ahead and signed a guy in Darian Batiste, 6'2", 245, that can bring it off the edge. He can also stop the run and also is relentless when he's rushing the quarterback. So when you add all those components, you see a guy that could see some early time as a freshman. South Alabama's West Sexton, the tight end at 6'4", 225, just oozes athleticism and is an instant big play threat waiting to happen. You see right there making a catch over the DB. He brings wide receiver skills to the tight end position, and that's going to be dangerous for teams to face in the Sun Belt Conference this season. I'm a big fan of quarterback Brandon Silvers. Troy got themselves a gem, the future Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year, in my opinion. I'm throwing all that on him right away because I like how decisive he is. The football, the ball just hops off his arm. I think he's going to be a great player for a long time in this conference. The Warhawks need secondary help in the worst way, as evident by the amount of guys they signed in the secondary. But they get a guy in Trey Hunter that can help them out immediately. Great ball skills and also can help you out in the return game. Speed, speed, speed. That's the name of the game for Jamie Willis, the outside linebacker. He's going to probably redshirt and add both, but this guy can definitely bring it off the edge. Mustafa Johnson is probably going to start for FAU right away. Coming from a junior college, 6'3", 295, big mammoth offensive lineman. He's playing center right here in JC. You see right there, number 63. But look for him to man the guard spot for the Owls and do a great job in competing, opening up holes for the running game. North Texas got themselves a gem of a defensive end in Brad Horton, 6'6", 250. Rarely do you see that size coming out of high school. This guy has that burst off the edge, that closing speed. If he can play with better pad level, he's going to be a star in the Sunbelt Conference for many seasons. I'm a big fan of Anthony Wells, the tailback, the talented tailback at 5'9", 180. This guy just doesn't go down, has tremendous footwork for a young tailback. You rarely see that coming out of high school. He played in the traditional offense, didn't play in that spread. I think he's going to help bolster that running game for the Hilltoppers this season. The future is bright for the Blue Raiders by getting the quarterback in Austin Grammer. I like the way he throws the football, stands tall in the pocket, and makes good decisions, and is always looking downfield. Watch this play here as he's getting in trouble. He's almost sacked, but keeps his eyes downfield and finds the open man and scores the touchdown. That's the type of leadership you want out of the QB position. I think the Cajuns have the best quarterback situation in the Sun Belt Conference. Blaine Gauthier does not turn the football over, so that's why you have to put him ahead of Ryan Applin and also the backup, Terrence Broadway. They got this guy transferred from the University of Houston. Very good ball player. Don't sleep on that fact. So when Gauthier leaves this year, after this year, Broadway should step right in and continue to produce. I think the Warhawks clearly have the best backfield in the Sun Belt Conference. You look at guys like Jairus Edwards, over four and a half yards of carry. Centaurus Donald, another guy over four and a half yards of carry. And Mitchell Bailey, the backup, six feet, 219. All guys can run the football, and that's why you have to like the chances of the Warhawks this season. The Red Wolves boast the best receiving core in the conference. Coach Gus Malzahn has to be salivating at the potential of these big wide receivers. Josh Jarbo, 6'3", 215. Taylor Stockhammer, 6'4", 210. And tight end Kedrick Murray, 6'3", 265. Gives him something that he didn't have at Auburn. That's talent at the wide receiver position. You have to like Applin in this offense throwing to those big targets downfield. FIU boasts the best offensive line led by left tackle Kalen Hoffman. This guy was second team all Sun Belt and also is on the Outland Trophy watch list. But they also have a guy in Shea Smith, the center, 6'3", 280. These guys are not big, but they're athletic. And that's what you need up front when you run the type of offense they run, which is why I think they have the best O-line in the conference. Staying in Miami, I like the Golden Panthers defensive front as well. I think they have the best D-line 
in the conference. All guys can cause havoc. Williams, Fisiani, Lee, and Hickman, these guys are tremendous players. They were one of the best run defenses in the nation last year. It was tough to run on FIU, and now you add even more pass rushers. This is a dangerous defensive front going into 2012. Again, it's tough to ignore what they're doing down there defensively in Miami with the linebacking core of FIU, Jordan Hunt, Winston Frazier, and Kenneth Dillard. These guys are thumpers, and it helps that you have a talented defensive line because it helps freeze up more opportunities for you to make plays downhill. But these guys can make plays even if the defensive line was terrible. They're fast, they're athletic, they're angry, and they can also cover. So with that combination, it makes you one of the better linebacking units in the conference. I'm big on activity around the football, and the Hilltopper secondary do a great job of staying active when the ball is in the air. You look at cornerback Tyree Robinson, 5'10", 180. Kareem Peterson, strong safety kid, is a thumper but can also make plays in the passing game. And look for Florida transfer Jonathan Dowling to start at free safety. 6'3 guy with a lot of range. You have to like the secondary of the Hilltoppers going into 2012. The Raging Cajuns have the best special teams unit in the Sun Belt Conference. Kicker slash punter Brett Bear is one of the clutch kickers in the country. And you look at the returner, Daryl Surgeon. This is a guy that averaged over 20 yards a kick return and had an 87-yard punt return for a touchdown. So the return game and the kicking game are both solid for the Cajuns. Offensive MVP has to go to quarterback Ryan Applin. When you're throwing the two potential NFL wide receivers and you're playing a spread open offense, this guy's going to put up some monster numbers this year, and he is a tremendous leader. So it's easy to say that this guy is going to be the offensive MVP in the Sun Belt Conference this season. A linebacker, Randall Johnson of FAU, should have a huge season for the Owls. He's a tremendous pass rusher, and they're going to put him in a lot of pass rushing type of situations to take advantage of his athleticism and his ability to get to the quarterback. Best pro prospect, I have to go with Josh Jarbo out of Arkansas State. He's the offensive pro prospect in my opinion because this guy has tremendous skill set. Was at Oklahoma, transferred to Arkansas State, and put up huge numbers. Defensively, I know this guy is a junior, but Andrew Jackson is one of the best middle linebackers in the country. 6'1", 250, angry guy, knows how to tackle, and you know how I feel about linebackers that look to tackle. This guy is a tremendous leader for a hilltopper defense that should be tough this season. I have to give freshman of the year to Anthony Wells of Western Kentucky with this type of balance and footwork. I think he's going to get some carries and I think he's going to be able to make a lot of people miss in the Sun Belt Conference this season. A big welcome to the Sun Belt Conference of South Alabama, but you look on the field, the offense has talent in the backfield with Baker in Houston, but not much else on the flanks. They move former tailback TJ Glover to the receiver position, and he provides some speed on the edge. But keep an eye on tight end Wes Sexton. We talked about him early on in the video. I think he has a legitimate shot to win freshman of the year. Defensively, they are led by linebacker Dick Johnson, and the other linebackers are solid in Williams and Cruz. The question lies up front and on the corners. But South Alabama will be a very good program in the near future because of the wealth of talent they can attract to Mobile, Alabama. I have Florida Atlantic finishing ninth in the Sun Belt Conference. You look at the offense, added beef up front should open up holes for new running back Xavier Stinson and new head coach Carl Pellini will install a new wide open spread attack which should help put more athletes on the field and give them a shot. Defensively, there is talent, in particular the linebacking core. I'm a big fan of Randall Johnson and what he brings to the table. They're moving to the 4-3 and that should help the run defense department, but with a very tough first half of the schedule, I mean, it's very tough. The defense will have to make it interesting but it's looking like a rebuilding year down there in Boca Raton, Florida. I have the Blue Raiders finishing eighth in the Sun Belt Conference. The interior of the offensive line gives optimism for the ground game, and quarterback Logan Kilgore, along with the sound group of wide receivers, gives hope to throw in the football. But consistency is the key for the Blue Raiders. Self-inflicted wounds killed these guys last year. The biggest concern for me is the entire defensive side of the football. 36 points a game has to improve. I look at the defensive line, and I see where all the problems have to end. They have to be do a better job of stopping a run, and stopping a run is all about attitude, and that's where incoming co-defensive coordinator Tyrone Nix will have a huge impact. The defense will definitely play better for these guys to avoid being in the Sun Belt Conference seller this season. 
Next up are the Mean Green of North Texas. Keep an eye on quarterback Derek Thompson this year to make a significant jump in his play and become one of the better quarterbacks in the conference. At 6'4", 222 pounds, Thompson has all the tools that you want in a quarterback. Now, replacing Lance Dunbar will be tough, but they can pick up the slack with the stable of backs that they have and also taking advantage of the wealth of talent they have at wide receiver. They're very big up front, and that's always a plus. Now, defense is the biggest question, but you have to like linebacker Zachary Orr, tremendous player. Depth is also a concern as well. But I look at the fact that these guys will have a repeat of last season, in my opinion. But look for 2013 to be a resurgence for the Mean Green. The only anomaly I can take from last year's season is the ineffectiveness in the red zone for the Troy Trojans. I think they'll get back to their scoring ways. Way too much talent offensively. I look at quarterback Corey Robinson as a fine player. He just has to cut down on interceptions. Running back Sean Southwood was a former Sunbelt Conference freshman of the year. And Eric Thomas, wide receiver, was second team all Sunbelt. And the offensive line is big, nasty, and experienced. So you have to see improvement offensively. The defense is a concern. I don't think that was an anomaly last year. They lose Massaquai up front, and they don't have the size to stop the run. I think it's going to be a concern. I think the secondary with Brian Willis, who was a former freshman All-American, and senior Brendan Trawick is the best unit of that defense. They do, however, get UL, Mississippi State, FIU, and Arkansas State at home. So there's a chance that these guys can return to the top half of the Sun Belt Conference. History shows when they protect up front, they do well overall. And I think that's the main question coming into the season. They start three sophomores up front, but you have to like Colton Brown in the quarterback. He's the best kept secret in the Sun Belt Conference. I love their skilled players as well. They got very good wide receivers in May. Harper and Leonard and we talked about the ground game earlier that they have I think they have the best running backs in the conference defensively they welcome Mizzou transfer Jaron Johnson up front the nose tackle and Arkansas transfer linebacker Austin Moss they should help out the defense and keep these guys as one of the nation's best the schedule looks brutal but the Warhawks could be sitting at five and three when they face the Cajuns I think they can push for a bowl bid this season the Hilltoppers are a very dangerous ball club, even without Rainey out there in the backfield. Quarterback Kawan Jakes plays some sound football down the stretch. Now, the ground game doesn't have Rainey, but that doesn't mean they won't have talent. Keep an eye on freshman Anthony Wells and also Antonio Andrews, who was once a Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky. They have one of the better offensive lines in the league, led by 6'5", 332-pound guard Adam Smith, and they will give time up front to Jakes to find those talented wide receivers, including tight end Jack Doyle. Defensively, middle linebacker Andrew Jackson is a man-child. 109 tackles last year, 13 TFLs. He has the luxury of playing behind a huge defensive front. And the Hilltoppers also have the best secondary in the conference. The issue will be going on the road in which they do well and play teams like Arkansas State, Troy, FIU, and UL. If they can split that, they could easily be looking at another winning season. FIU comes in in third place. They have to replace Carroll and Hilton on offense. Big pieces to lose, but they can lean on the ground game this year with outstanding tailback Kedrick Rose had over 1,000 yards last year. And although freshman quarterback Lorenzo Hammonds has been electrifying in the spring with his speed, quarterback Jake Metlock will get the start. And defensively, that's where the team strength lies. These guys, I think, will have sustained success from a group that was 14th nationally in points allowed. On with the best offensive line and the best defense in the conference. Look for FIU to make their third straight bowl game, but inexperience at the quarterback position keeps them from winning the conference championship. With Ryan Applin throwing the two NFL caliber wide receivers in Jarbo and Stockhammer, you have to like Arkansas State's chances this year in the Sun Belt. Gus Melzahn, the head coach, has better wide receivers here than he had at Auburn. Offensively, they'll be fine. Look for running back Frankie Jackson to have a breakout campaign this year. Now, defensively is where I have the biggest question mark. They lose valuable leadership and talent. They have to replace Demario Davis and Kelsey McCray. That's going to be tough, but they can make it happen with the recruits they brought in. But I look at the way they play offense. The offense can help ease the defensive youthfulness early on in the season by playing ball control. Now, when you look at their early road schedule, it's quite tough, but I still think they have enough talent and enough skill set to be playing in the bowl game late in December. I have the Raging Cajuns finishing first in the Sun Belt Conference. Offensive continuity has the Cajuns dreaming of back-to-back -back bowl appearances. 
With nine starters returning from an offense that averaged 32 points a game, they do lose Ladarius Green, but the offense is still explosive. Defensively, I think the D-line will surprise them this year as they add SEC transfer, nose tackle, Jalen Fields up front. Strong safety Darius Banks comes over from Ole Miss along with Delvin Jones, a 6'5", 230-pound outside linebacker. And the schedule sets up nicely for the Cajuns as they don't travel to Jonesboro or Miami. The challenge will be to put teams away in the fourth quarter and not allow them to come back, something that they struggled with last season. But with the top offense, special teams, and a favorable schedule, all signs point to the Cajuns winning their first conference title outright and going to back-to-back -to -back bowl games for the first time in school history.